StudioFabricCanada.com. I'm Miles, and today I'm going to show you how to make a 100% surgery-free swimsuit. How many of you have walked into a swimsuit shop and seen suits for upwards of $80? We've managed to make this suit, which has a fully lined front, is made from a high-quality, high-spandex fabric for about $25. First, we're going to start talking about some of the misconceptions um, in sewing swimwear, and we'll finish with step-by-step -step instructions. Before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about the misconceptions around sewing swimwear. The major one being that sewing swimwear is really difficult, and a lot of people are really intimidated by sewing swimwear. We're going to be looking at some simple procedures using just the sewing machine to make a simple one-piece suit, and I hope you'll find that it's quite a manageable project. Another misconception is a lot of people assume that because the swimsuit stretches that you also need stretch thread. This isn't the case. We just use all-purpose polyester thread like we do for other sewing, and it's the stitch that stretches with the suit. The final misconception a lot of people have is that they need a serger in order to sew swimwear. This simply isn't the case, as you'll see with all the procedures we're doing today are all just using a zigzag stitch on a standard sewing machine. Now I'd like to talk about some of the things that we need for this project. The first thing, of course, is we need a pattern. We're using McCall's 6759, and we're making it in a size 10. Um, we're not necessarily following the procedures in this pattern, so follow along the procedures in the video and you will find success. We've got our front and our back cut out in our swimwear fabric. We're using a polyester and spandex blend that has a good stretch on the crosswise and the lengthwise of the fabric, which is required for this type of suit. The next thing we have is our lining for the front piece, and we've chosen to use a nude lining because we find that under a mostly white fabric, a white lining goes quite sheer when it's wet, so that's why we've chosen to use a nude lining. It'll be less transparent. We have about two and a half meters of swimsuit elastic. This one is a cotton and rubber blend, which uh, holds up very well in chlorinated water. And the final thing that I mentioned earlier is just an all-purpose sewing thread. So before we can start sewing, we need to put all of our pattern pieces together. Now please note that this procedure I'm about to show you varies greatly from what you'll see in a standard pattern, but I think you'll find that it gives a really nice finish to the inside of your suit. So, we start with our front um, swimsuit piece. We're going to lay on top of that the back piece, right sides together, matching the shoulders, the side seams, and the crotch. Then we're going to lay the front lining piece on top of that, again, matching the crotch, the side seams, and the shoulder seam. I'm going to get these all pinned together, and then I'll show you what that looks like. So now that we've got all of our pieces pinned together, there's another thing I want to point out. This particular pattern uses a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, so we're going to be sewing 5 eighths from the edge. Um, just take special note in case you're using a different brand or a different pattern that only has a quarter inch seam allowance. You want to make sure your seams are accurate. When we actually sew the seam, we're going to be using kind of a long, narrow zigzag stitch um, for the main sewing. Then we're going to be trimming that seam allowance a little bit more and using a shorter um, but wider zigzag stitch to finish the end. Now that we've got all of the seams sewn, the crotch, the side seams, and the two shoulder seams, we're going to turn our swimsuit inside out, and it's at this point that we see the advantage of the procedure that we've done, because when we see the inside of the suit, all 
of our seam allowances are encased between the front and the front lining. We've also gone ahead and cut all of the elastic pieces. We've used the guide in the pattern to know how long the pieces should be. The next thing we need to do is make every piece of elastic into a ring like that. And we need to overlap the ends by 5 eighths of an inch and zigzag stitch them together. So now that we have each of our elastic pieces sewn in a ring, we, we're going to uh, vary a little bit from the way the pattern um, is indicated how to sew it. We're going to, instead of using the pattern markings, we're simply going to uh, divide our elastic into four equal parts. So we're going to put a pin at our join, fold the elastic in half, put a pin at the halfway point. We're going to bring the two pins together and hold the elastic in half again and mark the now quarter points with a pin. We can't use a notch at these points because we can't cut into the elastic or it's going to unravel. You could, if you'd like, use a fabric marking pen, would also be a good option, as long as the mark stays there <laughs> before you start sewing. So once we've got the elastic quartered, we need to quarter the neckline as well. So I'm going to start at one of the shoulder seams and indicate that seam with a pin. Then we need to find the halfway point along the neckline. It's not going to be the other shoulder because the back neckline is actually a lot deeper. So you can't assume that the halfway point is going to be the other shoulder seam. So we simply line up the two neck edges, the front and the back, trying not to stretch it as we go until we find our halfway point. And we indicate a pin there. And then we simply, again, line the two pins up together. to find our quarter points. Again, lining it up carefully without stretching it. Placing another pin. And one more point. So now we'll use each of these points with the pin indicated to line up the elastic on our neck edge and it'll mean that our elastic is evenly distributed around the whole neck. So before we start sewing, it's important to note that the distance, distance between the two pins on the neckline is much longer than the distance between the two pins on the elastic. So what we need to do is actually stretch the elastic as we sew in order to line up the seam. We're using a nice wide zigzag stitch to sew the elastic on. We're actually going to be using a three-step zigzag, which helps keep the elastic nice and flat. But if you don't have that stitch on your machine, it's perfectly good to use a wide single um, stitch zigzag as well. So note that we are lining up the lining, the main fabric, and the elastic all along the edge and applying a little bit of stretch as we sew. So now that we have the elastic sewn to the edge of our neckline, we're going to use the inside edge of the elastic as a guide to fold the elastic to the inside Again, we're going to be using this time just a two-step zigzag in order to um, hem the elastic in place. And you're going to be stretching it just slightly in, in order to keep your uh, hem nice and flat.
due to the Magic It video, we've quickly added the armhole elastic and the leg elastic. We've done our top stitching. I want to show you, again, the inside of the suit, which looks great. We've got all of the seam allowances bound between the lining and the front of the suit, so there's no rough, raw edges. So I hope you'll take the tips and techniques that we've shown you today and try them out for yourself, making your own swimsuit. I'm sure you'll find it's easier than you think. Thank you for joining us at StudioFabricana.com, and we'll see you next time.